what I mean when I say taking in the whole mix, getting this big picture perspective. Having the big picture allows you to hear a song and to feel and experience a song the way the average listener does. That's critical to knowing when things are working and when they're not working on an emotional level. It's also critical, I would say, to knowing when a mix is done. Hmm. Oh, hello. Welcome to After Hours. My name's Gregory Scott. Today, I want to talk to all of you about what may be the most important question facing every single mixer on the planet. I don't care if you're a mixer for hire or if you're mixing your own music in your mom's basement. I don't care what your genre of choice is, if you're working with artists, if you're not working with artists, what your mixing style is, and none of that matters. The question is, how do you know when a mix is done? This is a question I have been asked so many times I've lost track of. The cool thing is that there's a pretty simple answer, for me at least. I can't speak for any other mix engineer out there. It's simple and straightforward. But to get there, we got to get through a question asked by listener Fleisch Berg, who's asking a question about a previous episode, Don't Listen to the Thing You're Mixing. If you haven't seen that yet, highly recommend you watch that episode. In it, in a nutshell, we're talking about how if you're adjusting, say, the snare drum, you don't want to be listening to the snare drum per se. You want to be listening to everything around the snare drum and how the changes in the snare are affecting the whole mix. It's called big picture perspective. This is one of the hardest things to cultivate as an engineer because it's so easy to get lost in the minutia and buried in the details. And so having the big picture allows you to hear a song and to feel and experience a song the way the average listener does. That's critical to knowing when things are working and when they're not working on an emotional level. It's also critical, I would say, to knowing when a mix is done. So let's get to that question and get to the answer to the bigger question of finishing a mix. Thank you, Fleisch Berg, who asks, what do you mean when you say, open up your focus? That advice to me seems to mean listen to everything at the same time. But in my opinion, that's not possible to achieve. And it's not of any use anyway, because it would in turn mean listening to nothing at all. It's a great question, and I'm glad you pushed me on this a little bit, Fleisch. What I mean when I say taking in the whole mix, getting this big picture perspective. It's a little tricky with sound and how that works, but it's a lot easier to understand if we switch the analogy over to visual because everybody knows visual. It's our dominant sense generally. So what I want you to do right now is take the screen that you're looking at away from your face. So if you're looking at a monitor or a laptop or desktop or whatever, look up and look at the room that you're in. If you need to turn around, turn around. Take in the whole room. Hopefully there's gonna be stuff in the foreground, midground, background. Pick something in the midground, whether it's a painting on the wall or a vase on a table, it doesn't matter, and stare at it. Like, get your eyes locked hard on that thing and try to take in the tiniest details that you can on it. And this is what's happening in your brain when you've got a snare drum and you're adjusting the compression or the EQ and you're really focused on the snare drum. Big picture. What I want you to do now is leave your eyeballs pointed at whatever they're currently focusing on, but soften your gaze. A lot of times what happens is the eyeballs themselves will be like this and then they just open up a little bit. And by softening your gaze, what you can do is start to become more and more aware of what's existing out at the periphery. It gets a little tricky because things get pretty dim out there. And there's a reason for that. And it ties in with the answer to this question. Our peripheral vision is dim and it gets dimmer at the edges because it's not there for us to be able to focus on or identify objects. If there's something way over here and I don't know in advance what that thing is, I can't tell through peripheral vision. I can make out a shape or a color, real broad swaths of data. Peripheral vision on the flip side is incredibly sensitive to movement. And there's a reason for this. Evolutionarily, we are wired to be able to spot the proverbial tiger in the jungle. If there's movement over there, it might be a threat. We need to know about that. And so limbically, we don't even process this. This information goes straight to our limbic system, which triggers the fight or flight. And without even thinking about it, we're over there looking what's going on. We're analyzing. We're trying to find out if there's a threat or not, if we're safe. This is actually the process that you need to engage to know if a mix is finished. And here's how that looks. 
For me, when I'm about 70, 80% finished with a mix, all the grunt work is done. Like my drum compression, it's pretty much in place. The overall EQ, all the plugins that I have on the mix bus, those are locked in. And now I'm into this thing where I'm starting to fine tune. I'm doing automation moves. I'm riding my effects and the transitions, all the things that I've talked about in previous episodes. I'm really starting to dial the nuances in. And my process for this is that I will start at the very beginning and then I will let the mix unfold like a story. So I'm listening to it. My attention's there, but it's a soft gaze. And I'm hearing the music, but I'm not really actively processing it. And I'm certainly not sitting there with a microscope and scanning for flaws. What's going to happen is that as I'm sitting here doing my thing, or maybe I'm just staring at the desk and the music's playing and something will, something will happen. I'll just notice it. I'll be like, oh, uh, okay, that, that snare got a little lost there in that synth crescendo. Just, just note that. That's one thing. Mix is playing along. It's playing along. Oh, I, I lost track of the first two words in the transition there on the vocals. I, I need to fix that. Okay, that's two things. Mix plays on and on. A third thing will jump out at me. I hit stop. And now I fix those three things. I don't spend a lot of time doing it. Not precious. Fix the second thing. Fix the third thing. Go back to the beginning of the song. Hit play. Chill out again. Sipping my coffee. Doing my thing. Get a little further into the song this time. Oh, wait, there's that thing there. I got it. Okay, I'm making it. One, two, three. Making mental notes. When I hit that third thing, I go back. I fix them. I start over again. And I think you see where this is going. I just keep it. And this will take, this process, the last 30% of a mix can take anywhere from two to eight hours for me. I won't always do this contiguously. Sometimes I'll break it up over two or three sessions because I'm working on my own music. I'm not under the gun with a client. The point here is, though, that I'm letting the story continue to unfold. And like an editor in a book or an editor in a film, when something jumps out of me enough that it impedes, it just grabs my attention. It's the tiger at the periphery of my vision when I have a soft gaze and I notice that. It's the danger. This mix is not done. Danger. Mix not done. That's the level I'm working on. At some point, the cool thing is, I'll sit there, and before I know it, the song's done. I'm like, oh, I don't have a list. There's no one, two, or three. Interesting. I'll print the mix in real time. Just going through it again. This time, I'm out in the hallway doing something. I'm over there, and I'm ironing my shirt. Like I'm just going to make up random crap, but the point is, I'm not really listening to the mix at this point. It's printing. It's in the background. Sometimes stuff still jumps out at me, especially because I've moved to a radically different spot in the room or, or out of the room entirely where I can still hear the music. I'll notice and make, ah, oh, you know what? There's just a little too much 40 hertz on the bottom of that kick drum there in the chorus. Let me come in, change. Now I print the mix again and I go back to doing my thing out there. And usually first, second, at the most, the third pass of printing in real time, it goes all the way through. Nothing jumps out at me. Nothing bothers me. Half the time, I didn't even notice the song is done. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, that mix, it's bounced because I didn't notice it stopped. I was so busy what I was doing and nothing had jumped out at me. And that is how I know the mix is finished. Nothing jumped out at me when I had a soft gaze and I played it all the way through once, twice, three times. So thank you, Fleischberg, for asking. That's what I mean by a soft gaze. And that's how you can leverage this in your workflow to know when a mix is finished and then get on with your life.